مشاهدينا الأعزاء أبناؤنا الطلاب والطالبات السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته حياكم الله في الجزء الأخير من مراجعة منهج اللغة الإنجليزية للصف الثالث ثانوي نظام المقررات نتمنى أن تكونوا قد استفدتم من مراجعتنا السابقة وندعو لكم في هذه الأيام بالتوفيق والنجاح ومن خلال هذه الحلقة من برنامج مية على مية نستكمل وإياكم ما بدأناه من مراجعة لتتمكن عزيز الطالب عزيزة الطالبة من الإجابة على أسئلة الامتحان بكل يسر وسهولة ونذكركم أعزائي الطلاب بأننا نستقبل أسئلتكم واستفساراتكم على هاشتاج البرنامج مية على مية فاصل قصير وسنبدأ بإذن الله تعالى معكم أولى الأسئلة أعزائي المشاهدين أعزائي طلاب وطالبات الصف الثالث الثانوي أهلا بكم من جديد دعونا نذكركم بأننا نراجع وإياكم منهج اللغة الإنجليزية وسنركز في هذا الجزء على المفردات للباب الثالث ونذكركم بأننا نستقبل أسئلتكم واستفساراتكم على هاشتاج البرنامج مئة على مئة والآن نبدأ على بركة الله السؤال الأول في هالجزء راح نتكلم عن ال vocabulary okay uh, especially the phrasal verb okay let's read the exercise and try to explain it together uh, exercise A say complete the sentences with the correct form of the phrasal verbs in the books as we explained in the previous lesson phrasal verbs are verbs with preposition verbs with preposition they usually <coughs> give usually sometimes or usually they give different meaning from the verb itself uh, what should we should do here to complete the sentence from the phrasal verb on the in the box but using the correct form there is an extra phrasal verb you do not need to use before reading the sentence let's read the phrasal verb in the box and try try to understand what they mean or to get them in that context. The first one is keep off. The phrasal verb, as you notice, all the verbs here keep, 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 but with different preposition, so with different meaning. Keep off. When I say keep off, it means usually, it means uh, don't touch something, and don't touch, and or stay away from something, okay? Uh, keep on. When I say keep on, okay, good, keep on, continue, continue, keep on means continue. Keep to, the third one is keep to means to stay on. Keep to something, to stay on something. The next one, keep down, when I, when I tell someone to keep down means try to hide himself, to lay down or to, to hide himself uh, from something, okay. Uh, the next one is keep back. What does keep back mean? For example, if you see something, don't keep it back. Don't hide it. Or don't try uh, not to tell what you see. Okay? Don't hide what you see. Don't uh, tell it. Now let's read the exercise uh, together, the sentence. Sentence number one. <clears throat> the police officer asked us to tell him everything we had seen without any information okay the police officer asked us to tell him everything we had seen he asked us to tell everything we saw don't hide anything so from the meaning we understand from the context we need a word or a phrasal verb that means don't hide anything tell us everything that you saw without any information so the correct answer should be without keeping back why did we write it in this form? Why did we just put keep back as it is? Because it comes after the preposition without. Verb after without, it should be in ing form. So the complete sentence, the police officer asked us to tell him everything we had seen without keeping back, without not telling what everything that we saw. So he wants to know everything, okay? This is the first one. 
The second sentence, the sign says we should the grass. For example, when you are walking uh, on the street or in, uh, when you are in someone's house and you see a sign in the garden or in the park, there is a sign say you should farag the grass. You know the grass, the, the plant, the green plant on the earth. Okay, what does the sign mean? Don't touch it, don't, uh, don't be around it, stay away from the grass. Usually we say it as keep off the grass. So the sign says we should keep off the grass. Don't touch the grass, stay away from the grass, okay? For example, when young children have a dirty boots and their mother tell them, uh, keep off the carpet, don't touch the carpet because it's clean and your shoes are dirty. Okay, keep off, stay away. Number three, the sentence number three says, if you don't, started with if, if conditional. If you don't, the plan, you will be asked to leave the team. The first clause starting with if conditional clause. Okay, the second one is the main clause. If clause is negative, if you don't do something, or if you don't the plan, you will be asked, here present, here future, you will be asked to leave the team. When will you be asked to leave the team? When you don't stay on the plan, when you don't do the plan. So which phrasal verb, verb means that, which is keep to. Keep to means stay on. Keep to means stay on. If you don't stay on the plan, you will be asked to leave the team. Number four, Bob lying about where he had been the previous night, even though we all knew the truth. Okay, so Bob here is lying, and we all knew the truth. As the speaker says here, Bob lying about where he had been, we had been the previous night, even though he, we all know the truth. We all know the truth, and he is lying, and he is continuing. He is continuing. He didn't admit it. He didn't say the truth. He lying and keep on lying, keep on lying. So the answer is kept on. We use the phrasal verb keep on, but we change it into the past because, because the previous night, the time expression, refers to the past, refers to the past. So keep on or keep on means continued, means continued. Okay, continued. Bob continued lying about where he had been the previous night, even though we all knew the truth. Okay, that was it for the phrasal verb with the verb keep. Different preposition, different meaning. Let's uh, move to the next exercise. This is also for the vocabulary. Different, various uh, words. B, choose the correct option. A, B, C, or D to complete the sentences. Number one, without any, he is the best and most reliable employee of the company. K, A, fail, B, doubt, C, warning, the delay. I have to understand, dear students, the meaning of the sentence. I have to understand, I have to be aware of the context. Then that will help me to decide which is the correct word, which is the best word that is fitted in the sentence. Without any, he is the best and most reliable employee. He is expressing about his opinion. He is the best and most reliable employee of the company. He is saying his opinion. So, to emphasize your opinion, we use without any doubt. Without any doubt. What does without any doubt mean? To emphasize your opinion. This is my opinion. He is the best. Okay, this is my opinion. Okay, when you emphasize your opinion, and the word without any, I should choose doubt. 
because if I say without any fail, it has a different meaning. Without any fail mean you do it always. For example, he visit his mother without any veil, without any fail. He kept it. So he didn't miss a time. يعني ما ما فشل فيها. Without any fail, بدون أي فشل. Without any doubt, بدون أدنى شك. Without any warning. When you warning without telling. When when you not telling someone without any warning, it rained. No one tell us. Okay. No no one no one told us without any warning. Different meaning. Okay. When not telling. Without any delay. What does without any delay mean? When I say without any delay, it means things that should happen at its planned, at the same time we planned, without any delay. So the context here requires the word doubt, without any doubt, because the sentence here or the clause is telling his opinion. I need without any doubt to emphasize the opinion. Let's move to number two. Instead of watching TV, Martin suggested playing a board game, okay? Instead of watching TV, instead. So it means different. He wants to do something different, okay? Martin suggested playing a board game. A, for sure. B, for good. C, for a change. D, without fail. First, I have to understand the sentence. Instead of watching TV, okay, he doesn't want to watch TV. He wants to do something else. Martin suggested playing board game. He said, okay, I don't want to watch TV. I want to play board game. What is the correct answer here? What is the correct uh, option? When I say for sure, when I say something, okay, for sure, it's expressing certainty, definitely, بكل تأكيد. It doesn't fit here. It has no relation. It is not related. When I say B, for good, when I do something for good, it means permanent, بشكل دائم, إلى الأبد. It doesn't fit here also. When I say for a change, okay, this one is related because instead of watching, he doesn't want to watch. He wants to do something different. He wants to change it. So he played board game. So the answer for a change. D, without fail, as we explained in number one, without fail means when you always do it. When you do something without fail, you always do it. So the answer should be for a change. Instead of watching TV, Martin suggested playing a board game for a change. I want to do it for a change. Let's move to number three. When you, space, you must do everything in your power to achieve it. A, when you, when you set a task. B, when you set a goal. C, when you set standards. D, when you set a trap. Okay. Look here, collocation, the verb. Set with different noun. What is collocation? Collocation, usually verbs with noun, comes together, give a different meaning. The verb set and the nouns task, goal, standards, trap. I have to understand what is the sentence and I have to know what are the meanings of this word to help me to, uh, to, uh, to find the answer, okay? When you set a task or when you set a goal or when you set standards or when you set a trap, you must do everything in your power to achieve it. When you set, some, when you set something, you have to do everything to achieve it. Okay, achieve here. What in which word from this option is related to achieve? Is it task, achieve a task, or achieve my goal, or achieve standards, or achieve a trap? Certainly, it's B, a goal. I, when I set a goal, when I put a goal in my mind, I will be the first, I will be the best. This is, my, this is my goal. Okay, I set my goal. I have to do everything in my power to achieve it. So the answer is B. When you set a goal, you must do everything in your power to achieve it. When I say set a task, task something that you have to do. 
what is your task, like a homework, etc. Uh, set a standard, put uh, so, to decide on something, yani put set, set standard, معايير, طبعا معايير لشيء. Set a trap, as you know, a trap is a piece of equipment that we put to catch animals or mouse, etc. So the answer, when you set a goal, when you set a goal, you have to achieve your goal. Achieve it here, the it refers to the goal. It cannot be referred to a task or neither standards or neither trap. Now let's move to number four. The sentence number four says, it cost a great deal of money to the antique furniture. Okay, something cost me a lot of money. To do what to the antique furniture? Furniture, as you, as you know, the tool, equipment in your house. Antique means very old, okay? Something cost me a lot of money. Great deal of money means a lot of money to the antique furniture. Is it to recount the antique furniture, restore the antique furniture, to resolve the antique furniture, or retail? What I have to concentrate here is the verb, the noun, furniture. So, because the verb here should be related to something in furniture. furniture. Okay. What does recount mean? Recount means to say a story to someone. Tell a story. Okay. So it has nothing to do with furniture. How about the option B? Restore. Restore means to repair when something is damaged or broken, you can repair it, okay? And this one is related, but let's wait and see. Resolve. When you resolve a problem or solve a problem, you find solution, okay? Uh, this one is not related. D, retell. Retell to say again, to tell a story again, okay? So what do you think, dear students, is the best option from A, B, C, or D is related to this sentence? As, as you know, is uh, rest uh, restore. Restore means to repair. Restore means to repair. He paid a lot of money to repair his antique furniture. Okay. Now let's move to number five. The professor specializes on French literature or specializes about French literature, or specializes at French literature, or specializes in French literature. Okay, there is a lesson with a phrasal verb. Some verbs come with a specific kind of preposition. As we know here, specialize his major at university, French literature, French literature, a double fancy. So, what do I need here? Is, what, what is the correct proposition? Is it on? Is it about? Is it at? Is it in? I have to look at the verb here, specialize. And I have to, I have to uh, remember these verbs come with a specific preposition. Specialize in. Specialize in. So, specialize come with in. I cannot say specialize on, I cannot say specialize about, I cannot say specialize at, it's specialize in. The phrasal verb, some verbs come with different uh, or specific proposition. غالباً تحفظ. غالباً هالكلمات تحفظ. الأفعال اعتماع البروبوزيشنز. Now let's move to number six. Gerard concentrated his newspaper and ignored my critical remarks. Gerard concentrated his newspaper. He is reading the newspaper and he is concentrated, means focus. Okay, what preposition comes with the verb concentrate? If you know what comes with the verb focus, you will find it easy to, an to answer this one because focus on something, it has the same meaning, concentrate on something. He's concentrated on his newspaper and ignored. He didn't pay any attention to my critical remarks. I'm making, I was making comments, which is critical, important, but he wasn't concentrated on. The answer should be on because the verb concentrated must come with the 
preposition on. Now let's move to the sentence seven. They have boat a small in the suburbs. They have boat. Boat is the past tense of the verb buy. They have bought something small, okay? What did they buy in the suburb? Suburb is in the edge of the city, okay? So they bought something, they, what did they buy? Let's see the option. A, home. B, house. C, habitat. D, skyscraper, okay? What do you think they bought? They have bought a small home in the suburbs, small house in the suburbs, small habitat in the suburbs, or small skyscraper. We have to know what these words mean to, uh, to reach the final answer, okay? Home, it could be the same meaning with house, but if they came together, they have different meaning, okay? And I cannot say I will buy home. Okay, because home refers to the country sometimes. I can say I'm going home. I'm going to my house. I can say I'm going home. But I cannot say I'm going house or I am buying home. No, I am buying house. Okay, home, it could mean country or I can use it as a house. But it, if, uh, if it comes after the verb go, I'm going home. House, as we know, the building where you stay in, where you live, المنزل, okay. Habitat. Habitat is completely different. I, I might be confused between A and B, but C is crystal clear that it is the wrong answer because habitat means the home of animal or a planet, the home of animal or a planet. So here we are talking about people here. So there is no, there is no uh, relation between this habitat, mountain, الحيوانات أو المسكن أو المأوى. Uh, these skyscrapers, skyscrapers, as you know, skyscraper like a uh, skyscraper is a tall building, like towers, etc. Skyscrapers, tall building. Okay, so you cannot say I have bought a small skyscraper in the suburbs. Okay, bought suburbs, so the answer should be house. Should be house, as I say, home. I cannot say I buy. I am buying home. I say I am buying a house. Habitat for animal, skyscraper, tall building. So the answer is C. Now let's move to number eight. Have you checked the weather today? He's asking about the weather. Okay. Have you checked the weather? What the weather will be like? He is asking about the future. Can you tell us? A, expectation. B, guess. C, forecast. D, prediction. When you look at the, the sentence and you understand what, uh, what does it mean, you have to look at the option and try to uh, find the meaning of them. Sometimes there is a relation. There is a relation between words. For example, here, weather. When you see the word weather, what first comes to your mind, dear students, from this option? Can I say, have you checked the weather expectation? Have you heard of this word? Of course not. Can you say, have you checked the weather guess? Of course not. But I can say, have you checked the weather forecast? The word forecast usually related uh, with the word weather, okay? And also I cannot say, have you checked the weather prediction today, okay? But what this word mean? Expectation. What, what when you expect something, when you hope something will happen, uh, or you hope so, something will do it, expectation, توقعات. التأملات ما تجي مع الوذر okay. guess when I say I will give you an, a question and try to guess the answer the word guess here to try your best to find an answer it doesn't relate there is no relation with the word weather because the word the word weather is the key word here that will help me to find the, the word from option forecast forecast means prediction like here but what is the difference between forecast and prediction when I say weather forecast, forecast means prediction or description of what will happen in the future based on what we see here or based on evidence we know. يعني مبنية تنبؤات مبنية على وقائع نعرفها هذه غالبا في الطقس weather forecast اللي هو توقعات الطقس. A prediction when you predict something when you just say it I predict I think it's right I hope it's right. Okay. 
So the correct answer here should be forecast, which is C. Why? Because usually these words related to each other, weather forecast. I cannot say weather expectation. I cannot say weather guess. I cannot say weather prediction. نتوقف هنا أعزائي المشاهدين أبنائي الطلاب والطالبات لننتقل معكم لفاصل قصير ثم نعود مرة أخرى لنستكمل هذه الحلقة طرق الاستذكار الفعالة معظم المشكلات التي يعاني منها الطلاب في التعليم ترجع إلى جهلهم بطرق الاستذكار الجيد واستخدام عادات استذكار سيئة وإليكم بعض القواعد العامة للاستذكار الفعال قم بتنظيم أوقات الاستذكار واختر المناسبة منها لكل مادة اختر الأماكن الهادئة والمعدة للاستذكار عند المذاكرة اقرأ الموضوع قراءة عامة وضع خطا تحت الفقرات المهمة اختبر نفسك في الموضوع الذي قرأت فيه لتتأكد من مدى فهمك المواد التي تحتاج إلى حفظ اختر لها الأوقات المناسبة أعط وقتا أكثر للدروس التي ترى أنها صعبة بالنسبة لك إذا شعرت بالنوم أو الملل فلا تقاوم بل الجأ إلى الراحة لا تذاكر المواد المتشابهة مع بعضها بل ضع فاصلا بينها ولتكن مادة أخرى تذكر أن السهر الكثير متعب لك ولصحتك ويؤثر على الفهم والاستيعاب مع تمنياتنا لكم بالنجاح والتوفيق أعزائي المشاهدين أعزائي طلاب وطالبات الصف الثالث ثانوي أهلا بكم من جديد دعونا نذكركم بأننا نراجع وإياكم منهج اللغة الإنجليزية وسنركز في هذا الجزء على القواعد بما يخص أزمنة المستقبل للباب الثالث ونذكركم بأننا نستقبل أسئلتكم واستفساراتكم على هاشتاج البرنامج 100 على 100 والآن نبدأ على بركة الله تكملة الأسئلة في الجزئية هذه راح نتكلم عن الجرامر القواعد usually with starting with the modal verbs after that we will come to the future tenses okay let's read this exercise and understand what it, what does it want exercise C choose the correct modal verb to complete the sentences okay you have two options choose the correct answer but all the options are modal verbs and as we know modal verbs are specific verb or special verbs they have function they have function they change the meaning for uh, the sentence or the verb that follows okay number one according to the new law people must not or mustn't don't have to smoke in public places okay there is a new law made by a government or by country according to the new law people smoke in public area uh, places so is this law when you're talking about law so we should follow the rules we should uh, we are not allowed to do something else so what is the correct option is it mustn't or don't have to when i say mustn't or must not that means this thing is prohibited when i say don't have to here we are expressing the absence of obligation or the absence of necessity. So what do you think, dear students, is the correct option when I say, according to the new law, people mustn't or don't have to smoke in public place. So I should say mustn't because they are not allowed by law. The, should, the, the correct answer should be must, mustn't, mustn't. Okay. Now let's move to number two. You had better, you might not contact her 
for the time being. Otherwise, you will get in, into, uh, into another fight, okay? We have two model verbs, had better, might. First, we have to understand the sentence, and I have to differentiate between the two model verbs. He, here he says, you not contact her for the time being, okay? Don't contact her for, why? Otherwise, you will get into another fight. Something happened, something bad will happen if you contact her. So, you had better not contact her, or you might not contact. When I say had better, it, 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 we use it uh, when you give a strong advice, strong advice. Might, we express probab uh, probability, okay? So, had better, strong advice, might, probability, something might, maybe. I think that is the answer should be had better, because here he's uh, giving an advice to his friends. You had better not contact her. You shouldn't contact her. I am giving you an advice. I cannot say you might not. You might not. Rubbama, mumkin, eh, mumkin la. Lakin, you had better means this is a threat. This is a warning. This is a strong, uh, strong advice. Now let's move to number three. Students mustn't, needn't pay the fees in advance, but they can do so if they want. I have two model verbs here, okay? Mustn't, needn't. What is the difference? Mustn't, as we said, when I say you mustn't do something, you are not allowed to do it. You mustn't. You are prohibited. You mustn't park here. If you park here, you will get a fine, a ticket. You are not allowed, okay? But when I say needn't, needn't express the absence of necessity. You need it. غياب الحاجة مو بلازم. Okay? Or absence of obligation. So, which one is correct in this context? Should I say student mustn't pay the fees, which means students sh are not allowed to pay fees, uh, but here, but they can do so if they want. This meaning, the meaning of the sentence, they don't need the money in advance at the, mo at the moment, but they can pay later if they want. So, the, the absence of necessity at the moment, but later the necessity will become. So, the correct answer should be needn't. Now, students needn't pay the fees in advance. قابط الحاجة لا يحتاجون أن يدفعون المبالغ فيز اللي هي الرسوم. فيز نقصد فيها الرسوم. In advance, مقدما. But they can do if they want. The absence, the necessity is absence. But if they want, it's okay. I cannot say you mustn't. Students, you mustn't pay, which means it's for free, which is not correct. So number three, the correct answer is needed. Let's move to number four. Passengers can or ought to be at the airport at least an hour before their flights. Passengers, people who travel, okay? When you're traveling by plane, you should, you should be at airport at least two, three hours earlier. Otherwise, something bad will happen. You probably miss the flight. So, here is a strong advice. You should be at the airport. I cannot say can. Can means ability. I can do it. I can be. Okay, we know where you can be, the ability. But the sentence here, at the airport, at least one hour before their flight. At least one hour. This is an instruction. This is an instruction. We should follow it, okay? So, you should or you ought to. Ought to or should have the same meaning. So, I cannot say can because can expresses ability and ought to expresses uh, advice. Passengers should be or ought to be at the airport at least one hour before, because express advice, okay? Let's move to number five. Sentence number five says, Paul mustn't, mustn't is the pronunciation of must not, we say mustn't. Paul mustn't, needn't tell John about the present. It's a secret, okay? Mustn't, as we expressed before, as we say, it means uh, you, prohibited. Uh, mustn't means prohibited. You are not allowed to do so. Needn't, as we say earlier, 
means the absence of the absence of necessity. But here, Paul tells John about the present. Okay, Paul is preparing a surprise, a surprise, a present for John. It's a secret. Nobody should know. So which model verb is correct here? We should use must not. Paul must not tell John about the present. He's not allowed to because if he said so, if he did so, it will not be a secret anymore. So to be a secret, you mustn't tell John about the present. It's a secret. Now let's move to number six. I think you would or I think you should stop acting like a four-year-old. Here's He's complaining about something and giving advice, okay? Would is that expressing the past of will, okay? I will do something, I would do something in the past. Should, when you give an advice. Here, this person is giving advice to stop acting like a four-year-old. Stop being childish. You should stop. So he's giving an advice. Why? Because he thinks his opinion and give advice he should stop acting like a four-year-old. I cannot say I think you would stop. You would stop when, when you refer to the past, but here he refers to the present. You should stop now, okay? Let's move to the sentence number seven. They ought to had better be here on time or else the boss will be very angry. As we said before, ought to, the same meaning of should. If you are not familiar with model verb ought to, it's the same of should. So I can, they should, or had better be here on time, or else the boss will be very angry. Ought to or should, giving advice, giving advice. Had better, giving advice. But what is the difference here? Had better is strong advice. Strong advice usually with threats or warning tahdeed aw tahdeer okay so what is the indication here you have to be you should or had better here on time or what will happen or else the boss will be very angry so he is warning him if you are not here on time something bad will happen i am warning you so we should use had better the correct answer is had better because it is a strong advice with a uh, threat or warning. Now let's move to number eight. May I, do I have to go to the restaurant? This is a question. May I go to the restaurant? Do I have to go to the restaurant? The, 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 next what, uh, the next thing is, I really want to go to bed early tonight. Okay, He doesn't have the feeling that he uh, to go to a restaurant. He wants to stay in bed and sleep early. But what is the difference between may I, do I have to? When I say may I, I am asking permission. May I help you? I am asking permission. So this meaning doesn't fit with the sentence. When I say may I go to a restaurant? He's asking permission. The answer should be yes, sure, you can. But it's not here. I really want to go to bed early tonight, so I cannot say may I, because he didn't ask for permission, okay? The answer should be, do I have to, he asking here, have to, the present, the presence of necessity, wujud al haja. do I need to go to the restaurant? He's asking, is it necessary? Because I really want to go to bed early, okay? That is the difference. Do I have to? means does the necessary, uh, necessity is, it ex exist or not. But may I is asking for permission, which is not. Now let's move to another exercise. And this exercise mainly on future tenses, okay, future tense. As we studied before, the future tenses, it's a huge subject. Uh, we studied uh, earlier when we were in first uh, grade, second grade, a future will. What does future will? Future will, it comes uh, the base form after will. We use it for spontaneous decision, for prediction, promises, offer, etc. Also, as we go through, as we go through in the uh, English uh, Traveler 2, 3, we learn something else. Future going to. 
future going to. We use it when uh, uh, plans or decisions that already have been made by other people. And also we have uh, future progressive. What is a future progressive? Future progressive is formed by will be uh, ING. Okay, will be ING, will be playing, will be kada. Uh, we use will be the verb ing. When do we use it? When do we use the future progressive? We use it when action will be in progress, in progress, progressive action in the specific point in the future. This is the, the future progressive. What else do we learn about the future tenses? Future perfect. What is a future perfect? Will plus have plus past participle. Will have left, will have played, will have done, will have written. When do you use the future perfect? We use the future perfect when we talk about the action will be completed. The action is not completed yet, but the action will be completed in the future, but before a specific point in the future. Action will be completed before a specific point in the future. Also, we, we have in Mod uh, Traveler 5 uh, future perfect progressive. What is future perfect progressive? Well, have been ing four words in this uh, verb will plus have plus be plus the verb ing when you're talking when you emphasize the duration of an action in the future the duration of an action progress in a specific point in the future now we are going to answer this exercise and we are going to explain uh, why did we choose the answer one by one whether is it future will or future progressive etc what does this exercise say? Choose the correct option to complete the sentences below. One, what are your plans for the weekends? Okay, he is talking about plans. Good, this is a, a key word. Also for the weekend. Weekend, we're talking about in future. Okay, we are going to or we are about to visit my aunt and uncle in Bristol. Okay. Speaker A asks a question, what are your plans for the weekends? He's asking Speaker B about his plans for the coming weekend. And B, Speaker B say, we are going to visit my aunt and uncle in Bristol, or we are about to visit my aunt and uncle in Bristol. What is the correct answer? What is the difference between them? When I say going to, we are talking about people's plans, people's intentions in the near future. When I say about to, I'm talking about something will happen very soon in the future. I'm about to leave now. Very soon. But here going to people's plans or people's intention. So this is the correct answer. Why? Because we are talking about plans, people's plan, and in the future. So the answer should be going to. Now, let's move to number two. Also as a question. Speaker A asks a question, can you do me a favor? He asks Speaker B to do me a favor, okay? Speaker B responds, sure, as soon as I finish or I will finish my homework. The word here, as soon as, is a time close, it refers to time close, starting time close, as soon as, when, while. And the rule say in a future sentence, when you have time clause and main clause, when you see the word as soon as, it comes with the present simple, which is finish. So I cannot say will finish. Why? Because the word as soon as. In the time clause, as soon as. So the complete sentence is like that. As soon as I finish, I will do you a favor. I will help you in your homework, okay? So the time clause in future tenses, time clause should be in a present simple. The verb should be in a present simple. Here is finish. And the main clause will in will uh, fall. Here, this is the time clause. So we have to use the present simple finish. Let's move to number three. Look at those clouds. I think it's raining. Or, I think it's going to rain soon. Okay? Look at those clouds. Clouds. I think, my opinion, it is raining or going to rain soon. Also soon. 
in the near future. Raining, when I say it is raining, here I use verb is and raining, present progressive. We use it for future arrangements or something happening now. Okay, but when I say I think you are giving your opinion, okay, your opinion. Going to rain, when I use going to rain, we use going to rain for uh, predict something will happen, but based on evidence. Predict something will happen in the future, but based on evidence. What is your evidence? When he say, look at those clouds. This is our evidence. Prediction. So we use going to rain because going to, we use it for to predict about something will happen in the future, but with evidence. Okay? Our evidence is the clouds. Look at the clouds. It's a cloudy weather. I think it's going to rain. I think it's going to rain. I cannot say it's raining. When I say it's raining, it's happening now. But here, prediction. Prediction. Going to, we use prediction based on evidence. This is the evidence clouds. Let's move to number four. In two months, I am going to work, or in two months, I will have been working this company for four years. Jimmy. Now, we have two options, which we, and they are very long. The first one, I am going to work here. Future going to. And the second one will have been working. Will have been working. Four words. And this one going to. We are familiar now with going, with going to. Going to people's intention, uh, prediction based on evidence. But here, will have been working. Here we are talking about future perfect progressive, which is will have been working. We are talking about when we emphasize the duration, the duration of an action that will be in progress uh, up a certain time, uh, certain point of time in the future. How did we know? He said in two months, which means after two months. This is future. Not now, but in two months. Okay. Uh, I will have been working in this company for four years. Emphasize the duration. He narakaz al mudda. Duration. So, when I see future and duration, so he, we are the purpose of the sentence to emphasize. Al gharad min al jumla hada yushadd ala mudda al hadath in the future. In two months, I will have been working in this company for four years. Not now. Emphasizing the duration, I have a contract to work for four years or five years. I'm emphasizing the duration of my job, but not now, it's in the future. So we use future perfect progressive when we're referring, when we emphasize the duration of an action in the future. Okay, so the answer should be, will have been working, will have been working. Now let's move to number five. By the time you wake up, I will arrive. Or, by the time you wake up, I will have arrived in Barcelona. Here. We have two options. Future will, will arrive, and it has many, uh, many usages. Different ways to use future for uh, prediction, uh, spontaneous decision, etc. Okay? And will have arrived, here will have arrived, represent the future perfect. Will have a past participle. When do we use the future perfect? When we talk about that action will be completed before something in the future. Which is, what is the point of the future? By the time you wake up. So, now we are here. Okay. By the time you wake up, for example, when I say here. By the time you will wake up, could be here. Now, this is now. 
here you wake up sorry for the writing okay by the time when you wake up the action will be completed which is I will have I will have arrived to Barcelona I will have arrived to Barcelona okay we use the future perfect when we took uh, action that will be completed it's not completed it will be completed before a specific time in the future okay we use it when we'll, uh, the, the action will be completed before a specific point of time in the future why how do you know by the time usually used after the word by by the time you wake up and we use the sentence here present simple wake up or I can say by the time by 2020 by 2330 uh, the project will have finished اذا عندنا مشروع راح يخلص بعد مثلا 10 سنوات نقول فيه 20 30 او 20 20 مثلا اقول the project will have finished will have completed by 2020 by 2030 or i can use by a sentence but the sentence should has should have a present simple verb okay so the answer should be will have arrived i will have arrived in barcelona by that time you wake up okay when you wake up i will i will be arrived let's move to number six i really feel very sleepy he wants to sleep b speaker a said i, f I really feel very sleepy speaker b said in response i make or i will make you some coffee sorry okay uh, I make or I will make you some coffee I think this one is already answered but don't worry I will explain it for you we have two options is it I make or I will make you some coffee as you see the answer I will make but why did we choose the future well I real very I really feel very sleepy as a response, he, make, he made a spontaneous decision. Okay, I'll make you some coffee. I cannot say I make, present simple. When I say present simple, I make, when you think about something, uh, actually repeated action, our general truth. So I will use I will make because he took a spontaneous decision. decision. I will make you some coffee. Okay, number seven. When when will you train uh, have left, or when does your train leave? He's asking a question, asking about the train. So, when we talk about train, or bus, or plane, we are talking about schedule, timetable, وقت زمني, جدول زمني, and in this context, we have the siyaq. We usually use the present simple. Why do we use the present simple? Because when we refer to schedule timetable, we use the present simple. We have two options here. When will your train, they are question. When will your train have left? This one will have left. This is future perfect. This is future perfect. And does your train leave here? Does leave, this is present simple. This is present simple. Okay. Okay, do I have to choose the future perfect? Do I have to choose the present simple? It depends on the purpose, okay? Future perfect, as we mentioned before, when we talk about action will be completed before a specific time in the future there is no specific time in the future the question ends here and the present simple when we ask about the timetable or schedule referring to a timetable which is the correct answer when does your train leave when does your train leave because we are talking about timetable Okay. We use present simple as a future tense when we're referring to schedule or timetable. For example, I say, my flights arrives at 7. 
or my bus departs at 9. I use the present simple because we are referring to time table. Number 8. The sentence number 8 says, my neighbor will have traveled, is going to travel to Paris. We have two options. Will have traveled, this is future perfect. Will have traveled, this is future perfect. And as we said before, we use it, dear student, we use future perfect for action will be completed before a specific time and there is no specific time in future here, okay, or specific point of time. The other option, going to. When do we use going to in the future? We use going to when we talk about people's intentions, people's plans that they have already made. Now I am, already. So my neighbor is going to travel to Paris. The answer should be my neighbor is going to travel to Paris. We use the future going to because we are talking about plans, people decisions. They have already made the decision, so that should be the answer, is going to. نتوقف هنا أعزائي المشاهدين أبنائي الطلاب والطالبات لننتقل معكم لفاصل قصير ثم نعود مرة أخرى لنستكمل هذه الحلقة. أبنائي الطلاب والطالبات مرة أخرى في الجزء الأخير من هذه الحلقة لمادة اللغة الإنجليزية للصف الثالث ثانوي لبرنامج مية على مية نستقبل أسئلتكم واستفساراتكم ونجيب عليها في هذا الجزء من الحلقة عن طريق هاشتاغ البرنامج مية على مية إلى أولى الأسئلة حقيقة وأنا أتابع التعليقات في البث المباشر كان هناك بعض الحيرة في بعض الإجابات اللي تطرقنا لها وخاصة فيما يتعلق بالفريزل فيرب اللي هي الفيربز comes with preposition for example in question exercise B the sentence number four the professor specializes French literature we have four options in on about at the correct answer is in because specializes comes with in كان في حيرة بعض الردود أرى بعضهم يقول on بعضها يقول لا تجي at فهي موجودة في كتاب الطالب ال verbs comes with in they are defined verbs come with to في أفعال محددة في بدون أي قاعدة هي تأتي هكذا في اللغة أفعال مع preposition مع حروف جر محددة for example take care وهكذا so بالنسبة عشان الجزئية كان في تساؤل في التعليقات specializes in French literature وليست specialize on because specialize in when I say it in Arabic specialize in معناته متخصص في الأدب الفرنسي وأيضا كان هناك تساؤل وحيرة في بالنسبة للفقرة نفس الجزئية الفقرة السادسة نمبر 6 جيرارد كونسنتريتد ذا كوريكت أنسر إز أون بعض الأسئلة بعض التجاوب في قال لماذا لم نختار إن كما قلنا من قبل الموديل فيربز أو في الفريزل فيرب عفوا اللي هي الفيربز وذي بروبوزيشن تأتي أفعال محددة مع بروزيشن محددة هذه بدون أي قاعدة هي مجرد حفظ في الفوكابلري والمفردات فلما نقول هنا جيرارد كونسنتريتد أون مينز فوكس أون سو ذير إز نو كونسنتريتد إن إن إنجلش ما في في اللغة الإنجليزية كونسنتريتد إن أو كونسنتريتد تو فهنا نحدد وننتبه على الفعل ونرى ما الذي يأتي معه في الفيرب أيضا كان في بالنسبة للجزئية الجرامر في الموديل فيرب كان في تساؤل لماذا لم نختار الإجابة الفلانية في exercise C choose the correct answer or the correct model verb number five Paul mustn't or needn't, okay? Tell John about the present. It's secret. أحد تعليقات قال عادي نحط needn't يعني لا. الجواب mustn't. Mustn't means 
uh, he is not allowed he is prohibited اوكي okay? لازم نفهم قيام الجمله عشان نعرف ليش اخترنا مسنت وليش مو هو بعادي يجي نيدت الجمله تقول بول مسنت تيل جون about the present it's secret يعني مو uh, غير مسموح لا يجب عليه اخبار شخص ثاني عن المفاجأة لأنها لأنها تعتبر سر فبالتالي لما أقول هي نيد انتل فأقول هنا زي العادي مو بلازم يقول فإذا قال عادي لا هنا المعنى يختلف فلما أقول لك يو مسنت تل يو مسنت تل أي جيف يو أن أوردر أنا أعطيتك أمر أنك يجب أن لا تخبره لأن الجملة لما ترجع لنا مكتوب إتس أ سيكريت فلما أقول إتس أ سيكريت سو يو هاف تو فولو ذا رول يو مسنت فلما فهو غير عادي لما اقول يو نيد انت، نيد انت معناته غابت الحاجه، يو نيد انت كم، يعني عادي بتجي ما بتجي، هذا المعنى اقصد فيه، فالنقطه هذه اتمنى انها تكون واضحه. آه برضو في موضوع الموديل فيرب، وقلنا الموديل فيرب هي فيربز هاف سبيشال فانكشنز، ذي اكسبرس ديفرنت فانكشن. في نمبر 7 الجمله كانت ذي اوت تو اور هاد بيتر. أول شيء يجب أن عليه الموديل فيرب أوتو سام ستودنت سام بيبل نوت فاميلير وذ ات أوتو مينز شود يعني عندك الموديل فيرب أوتو وعندك الموديل فيرب شود هما نفس الكلمة نفس الاستخدامات فإذا تشوف أوتو هي شود شود هي أوتو فبالتالي عندنا كان خيارين they ought to أو بين قوسين شود أو الخيار الثاني they had better be here on time or else the boss will be very angry okay What is the difference between ought to and had better? They expresses uh, maybe the same thing. Ought to expressing when you t- uh, give you give, when you give an advice. Had better when also when you give an advice. But what is the difference? Ought to or should when you give a general advice, okay? Uh, but had better when you give a strong advice. نصيحة أقوى had better هي advice نصيحة لكنها أقوى. ليش قلنا أقوى؟ لأنها تكون منطوية تحت جانب a threat or warning. threat معناته التهديد أو التحذير. فخلونا نقرأ الجملة مرة ثانية ونعرف ليش اخترنا had better. هنا يقول they had better be here on time. يجب عليهم باب النصيحة. يجب عليهم باب النصيحة أن يكون هنا على الوقت. آه غير ذلك إذا لم يحصل ذلك the boss will be very angry. المدير أو المسؤول سيغضب. فهو يحذرهم ويهددهم. فعشان كده اخترنا had better had better strong advice with threat or uh, warning okay so I hope it was clear this is the difference between should and had better they they, they express the same thing gave advice but had better is stronger than should and it has it comes with threat and warning okay دعونا نرى التعليقات Uh, فيما يخص الفيوتشر فورم الجزئيه الثانيه اللي تكلمنا عنها اللي هي الازمنه المستقبليه كان في تساؤل عن الـ uh, يعني في بعض الازمنه يقول لماذا لم تاتي uh, او في بعض الازمنه مثل بريزنت سمبل وبريزنت بروجريسيف المتعارف عليه بين الطلاب ان بريزنت سمبل وبريزنت بروجريسيف they are classic they are they have their own function but sometimes we can use them present simple sometimes and present simple we can use them as or when we refer to the future but in uh, يعني small uh, small areas for example when do we use the present simple when do we use the present simple in, in the future use the uh, present simple in the future when we referring to official time table or official programs يعني جدول زمني رسمي او برامج رسميه على سبيل المثال عندك الجدول المدرسي الجدول الرحلات الطائرات وهكذا هنا نستخدم البريزنت سمبل فور اكزامبل ماي فلايت اور ماي بلين ديبارت ات 10 بي ام طائرتي تغادر الساعه العاشرة ديبارت هنا تغادر في الساعه 10 يعني في المستقبل القريب لكن هنا استخدمنا الفيرب ديبارت ليش استخدم بريزنت سمبل في حالة واحدة فقط نستخدم present simple في ال future when we refer to official timetable نتكلم عن جدول زمني وصل القطار الساعة الفلانية يغادر القطار تصل الطائرة يغادر الباص وهكذا also uh, when we uh, when we uh, talk about in school تبدأ الحصة the, the class starts at 6 we are referring to official timetable فقط في هذه الحالة نستخدم ال present simple في المستقبل لما نتكلم عن جدول زمني ويكون رسمي يكون رسمي uh, Also, what is the difference between uh, the present progressive? Also, the present progressive, we can use it in the future. We can use the present progressive in the future in a specific point when we uh, 
talking about personal arrangement in the future. تكلم في المستقبل لكن ترتيبات خاصة. Personal arrangement. For example, uh, I am traveling to India next summer holiday. Okay. I use the present progressive verb to be am and the verb ing traveling. Okay. As uh, the future tense. Why? Because I am talking about something uh, I arrange. Special or uh, personal arrangement. ترتيبات خاصة أو future arrangement. ترتيبات uh, مستقبلية. So what does it mean when I say I am traveling to India next week? That means I have already uh, made my mind. I had already planned for it. I have bought tickets. شريت التذاكر خلصت. يعني الفكرة في بالي خلاص مرتب لها. شريت التذاكر حجزت الطيران والسكن وكله. فهنا نستخدم the present progressive في the future في الحالة هذه لما نتكلم عن the future arrangement. هي قريبة من the future going to. هي قريبة أيضا. من future going to going to when you talk about plans plans or decisions that have been made by people okay في أيضا استخدام لها آخر لما تقول predictions تنبؤات لكن مبنية على حقائق predictions based on evidence I can use going to in the future when I'm talking about predictions based on evidence يعني حقائق مبنية أو تنبؤات مبنية على حقائق for example when you some when you see someone walking you say watch out you are going to step over the chair انتبه احترس انت راح تقع على الكرسي what is the evidence كيف عرفت because you see the chair is on his way ترى الكرسي على طريقه وهو لم يرى فأنت تنبأت لكن مبني على حقائق أمامك الكرسي والشخص يمشي فأنت تنبأت you are going to step over راح تتعثر بهذا الشيء هذا فيما يخص الفيوتشر فورمز لأن كان في بعض الأخبطة لكن المهم لما نتكلم عن التنسز لما نتكلم عن الأزمنة عندك حاجتين مهما كان الزمن الأزمنة التنسز في اللغة الإنجليزية كثيرة جدا لكن يجب عليك أن تركز على حاجتين أساسيتين the form الشكل كيف أميزها مجرد أني أرى الفعل هل هو متكون من كلمة كلمتين ثلاث أربع كلمات بعض الأزمنة تكون منها كيف شكله أقدر أميزه الشيء الثاني آه، لماذا استخدمه the uses موجود لما تراجع كتاب الطالب موجود في الجزئية الأخيرة الجرامر ريفرنس فيها ال usages of the present uh, or the past or the future آه، أعتقد هذا أكثر كان أكثر الـ 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 الشكوك أو التساؤلات حول الموديل فيرب وحول ما يخص الفيوتشر فورمز أعتقد نكتفي بهذا القدر من الأسئلة أعزائي المشاهدين أبناء الطلاب والطالبات نكون قد وصلنا إلى نهاية هذه الحلقة ونتمنى أن نكون قد وفقنا في الطرح نشكر لكم طيب المتابعة وحسن الاستماع والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته